All right, peace. Hey, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, please uh, feel free to like, subscribe. Most importantly, comment down below uh, in regards to the topic at hand. Today, I come to talk to you all about PTSD. And uh, PTSD stands for post-traumatic slave disorder. Now, typically, I know it as post-traumatic stress disorder. But uh, the reason why I have a different outlook on it is just because when it comes to uh, me and my and mine, and when I say that I'm I'm talking about my people, uh, it is it's a lot more serious than that, and it's a lot more deeper than just post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, post traumatic slave disorder is basically the product of oppression for over two thousand years that the black man and black woman has gone through, and our results of that is. Um, overwhelming incarceration rates. Uh, it is um, underdeveloped um, communities with underdeveloped youth. Uh, it is um, low graduation rates and low poverty rates in our, um, in our communities and our environments. It is no financial freedom and no financial stability within majority of our communities. That is the result of post-traumatic slave disorder. Now, I'm going to break it down for you even more. On your every day when you're driving down the street, this is a non-black. Hell, even if you're black too, and you see a young black man or a young black woman, and, when, and you see them to the point where you can tell they probably don't have a job, you can tell that they've been raising the, you know, themselves basically, based on how they dress, how they're talking, how they're carrying on with themselves, and how they, how they carry themselves as an individual. But my point is this, is that when you see this, and sometimes when you, when you ask yourself, why do a lot of black people, African Americans, why are they prone to um, crime? Why are they prone to being arrested? Why is it that three out of five black men have a record and have a felony, uh, you know, an existing felony. Why is that? Why three out of five black men have been incarcerated um, for, uh, you know, a multitude of, of time? You know, why is that? You know, you, and then when you ask yourself, why are we so, um, you know, why are we so uh, uh, gang infested, right? You know, why are we, why do we put ourselves through this, right? Well, this is why. It's because when you've gone through such traumatic experience, um, these are the results. So first, before I go any further, we're going to go ahead and break down PTSD. But like I said, look at it as what I'm thinking, and that's post-traumatic slave disorder. I want y'all to think of it that way while I'm reading all the definitions of this, um, this illness, right, and the symptoms of it. So PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is a mental health problem that some people develop after experiencing or witnessing a life-threatening event like combat, a natural disaster, a car accident, or sexual assault. So this is something that develops after someone is experiencing or witnessing a life-threatening event. So um, I'm definitely going to show you, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show you right now, images of life-threatening events. So we can understand uh, what are the results of life-threatening e events, uh, um, at least experiencing life-threatening e events. I'm going to show you the results. I'm going to show you the life-threatening experiences, and then I'm going to show you the results of those life-threatening uh, uh, experiences. So if we take it all the way back, You know, when you see this image, you can only imagine what that person is going through inside. Uh, to be shackled up like that with your feet and your hands bound and you can't do nothing about it. You can only imagine what that does to the psyche. And, you can, and, and I'd like to assume that man right there, if he didn't have a kid, he probably had one by, you know, sooner than later, right? Could you imagine what his kids went through? 
Could you imagine him trying to raise kids knowing that he went through this? And, and how do you become a man, a self-respected, independent man after going through this? Tell me that. And especially doing it by yourself. In a land where you're, you're being treated like this. Tell me, tell me how you can, um, you can heal from this. And, um, and, and, and how could you not deem this life threatening? Now understand that <clears throat> the descendants of this man walk these streets today. This, the descendants of this man walk these streets today. And they walk the streets with the pain that you see in his eyes right now. They walk these streets with the despair that you see in his eyes right now. And But after a while, what you need to understand is that despair and that pain turns into not only anger, but it can also turn into violence. You treat someone like an animal, guess what they're going to act like? There's another image of a life-threatening event. Look at that man's back. Look at my brother's back over there. And so for people to assume that 200 years later, the descendants of this man and of this man um, are not feeling the ramifications and are not, are, are not left with, 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 with the leftover uh, of emotion of this man. You see, when y'all want to talk about DNA and genetics, we already understand that alcoholism is hereditary, right? That you can pass on um, your bad habits to your kids, and your kids, 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 and so on and so forth. So if you can pass on your bad habits, don't you think you can pass your pain on too? Don't you think you can pass your fear on too? Fear of, of, of being treated like an animal? Fear of constantly being treated inferior? You don't think those things are hereditary as alcoholism, as, as the thirst of fucking alcohol? So, so for people to understand what the black man went through the past 2,000 years, people will understand why the black man acts the way they do nowadays. Now, I'm not trying to justify anything anybody does. My point is, is that there is uh, always uh, a cause. There's always a reaction, uh, an action and a reaction. That's it. A cause and effect. You know, things are always in sequence. So what I'm trying to do here is to show you and understand where our plight comes from, where the, um, the disconnect began. This is where the disconnect began. Is when my people were shackled and treated like some animals and were beat on the ground uh, uh, mercilessly. And then you expect 200 years down the line for that man's kids, 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 kids to, what, to get over it? To forget all that pain, even though it is never resolved. There was never any um, uh, official apology. There was never any um, reparations. There was never any full acknowledgement. Uh, right now, motherfuckers are fighting to keep the statues of men who permitted this. And, 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 and y'all and people want to expect us to think that we're equal, that we're respected. In a society when you want to keep the statues of the people who made this legal. So if you want to talk about life-threatening events, I'd like to assume this is what we're talking about. I'd like to assume that's what we're talking about. All right, so back to, um, back to the definition. It's normal to have upsetting memories, feel on edge, or have trouble sleeping after this type of event. So upsetting memories. So not only do these things live within your emotions, but they also live within your memory, um, subconsciously and consciously. At first, it may be hard to do normal daily activities like go to work, go to school, or spend time with people you care about. But most people start to feel better after a few weeks or months. Yeah, but what if it's 200 years? What, is, what if it's 400 years? How about, I mean, what do you do then? 
Now, I don't see any diagnosis for that. If it's been longer than a few months, you're still having symptoms, you may have PTSD. For some people, PTSD symptoms may start later or they may come and go over time. Post-traumatic sleep disorder symptoms may start later on or they may come and go over time. So understand that the plight that our ancestors went through, the symptoms can start later on or they may come and go over time. What factors affect who develops PTSD? PTSD can happen to anyone. It is not a sign of weakness. So when you see, uh, you know, when you see a young black man or young, a young woman who has it hard and you can tell that they didn't have, they've had a shitty life, they ain't got no money, they ain't got no job, it's not weakness. It's not weakness. It's mentally, they've, they've already been defeated before they were even born. That's really what it is. Now, I'm a, I mean, well, trust me, and you understand what I'm saying, as we break down the definition of post-traumatic slave disorder, a.k.a. post-traumatic stress disorder, a number of factors can increase the chance that someone will have PTSD, many of which are not under the person's control. So understand that somebody who was born into poverty their mom was a prostitute, drug addict. Daddy was in and out, died at a young age, or was in prison. All they've seen is that. That's all they've seen. So when they grow up, guess what they're going to do? They're, they're going to do one or the other. Either go to jail, <clears throat> be a gangster, or be a drug addict. But basically, make sure they're going to damn sure repeat what they saw, because that's all they've seen. And... <clears throat> When that happens, we just, we just read, a number of those factors can increase the chance that someone will have PTSD, many of which are not under their control. They're, it's not under their control. You see, what, what we need to understand is that the, what, you are the product of your environment, no matter how much you want to change that. And if you do change that, that means you have soaked up game from a different environment, which means you, you've changed environments. But one thing's for sure is, if you inhale, you're going to come out with a little bit of smoke on you, man, and with a little burn. It's just, that's just what it is. Birds of a feather flock together. That's it. For example, for example, having a very intense or long-lasting traumatic event or getting injured during the event can make it more likely that a person will develop PTSD. For example, having a very intense or long-lasting traumatic event or getting injured during that event can make it more likely that a person will have PTSD. 2,000 years, specifically here in, in America, 400 years of traumatic events, right? 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 400 years of this. I would like to assume that there's going to be ripples ultimately with anybody who's involved with this. Whether you're the one doing, doing the, uh, the, um, the oppression or you are the one being oppressed. But one thing's for sure, the one who's being oppressed is going to suffer long-lasting effects mentally, physically, and spiritually because of these things that have happened to him and her. And, his, and their kids. So for us to not assume, for us to not put this shit together, like I said, it blows my mind. Instead, you just want to call people ignorant. You want to call us niggas. Instead, you want to just say that we have opportunities, but we don't want to take advantage of them. We're just lazy with this, with that. If we were that lazy, then how the fuck were we working 16 to 20 hours picking y'all's cotton if we were that goddamn lazy? And then if... And then if y'all work so goddamn hard, why don't you do it your damn selves? So not only was America built on the backs, literally on the backs of these men, but their plight has been disregarded and ignored through time. And then now their descendants are treated like they are doing this to themselves. So, um, so y'all can miss me with that shit. Feel me? 
So what we need to understand that having a very intense or long lasting traumatic event will definitely create a system and the illness of PTSD. <clears throat> PTSD is also more common after certain types of trauma, like combat and sexual assault. So if you want to talk about it, if you want to talk about it, um, ever since, ever since the, ever since the meeting of the Europeans and the African con uh, continent, it's been nothing but combat. It's been nothing but the fight and the battle to win over one, uh, you know, one of the party. And so my point is this, is that when you have lived nothing but opp oppression and combat and sexual assault, and best believe that those men, those, uh, you know, slave men and women were raped throughout their time. Um, that's why we have... You know, a lot of, I mean, that's why we have, uh, I forgot the, I forgot the, the term that they use, but this is a certain term that slave masters had for the, uh, the slaves that they had sex with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I forgot the name. Uh, what was that name? But anyway, not yet. And they, and they were raping the men too. And they were raping the men too. And then on top of that, they would make us have sex with each other. They would make relatives have sex with each other because they wanted to breed the same uh, type of slave, right? So they would literally have someone's mother have sex with their own son. And what they would do is they would put brown paper, they'll put bags over their heads. That's where that whole phrase, put a brown paper bag over their head. That's where that shit actually fucking came from. Is because they would put, uh, they would take a, a young man who was strong and built. And since he came out of his mother, they had make them have sex. And they'll put heads, they'll put bags over their heads because they knew if they didn't do that, they wouldn't, they couldn't do it. So go through sexual assault for 400 years like that. Go through combat of getting beat and getting tortured and fighting and getting put in chains and bondage for 400 years. And tell me your kids are not going to feel that effect. Personal factors like previous traumatic exposure, age and gender can affect whether or not a person will develop PTSD. What happens after the traumatic event is, is also important. So what happens after the traumatic event is also important. Stress can make PTSD more likely, while social support can make it less likely. Okay, boom. That's, see, that's another big main point that I wanted to make. What happens after the traumatic event is also important. So in regards to uh, 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 slavery, what, happens, what happened afterwards is, is what's actually just as important, right? So the justification or the disregard um, of the oppression and the continuous strategies of implementing the same type of uh, uh, dominance is not showing that not only do people understand, but they're trying to stop what had happened. All they're doing is trying to figure out another way to do it. And so then when people don't, and then when people don't listen and don't accept the fact this is happening and it's still affecting everyone to this day, including the, you know, <clears throat> the descendants of, um, of, you know, of, of slaves, for, for them to not understand that is, like I said, is beyond me. For them to not understand and tell people that it happened a long time ago to get over it type of attitude. Do you tell that to somebody in the army when they go on combat and they come back? And they're, and they're having bad dreams and they're going all crazy. Y'all tell them to forget about that shit? Nope. Y'all don't tell them to forget about that shit. Not at all, huh? He, it, it, you know, whether they've been to war for five years, ten years. Hell, I'll even give them 15 years. But I know ain't no damn soldiers going to war for 15 years. But let's just say 15 years. That's still 15 years of combat, right? They, they, that means they had a gun and they were shooting other people and people were shooting at them. And they felt unsafe and there was life-threatening events, right? Let's just give them 10 years of that. And when they come home, I don't hear anybody telling them to it's in the past and to leave that shit alone. So do not tell any other fucking black person who done been through 400 fucking years of that shit to leave it alone and it's in the past. Because something like that, you cannot leave in the past. Because we just read here that anything like that, especially if they're very intense or long-lasting traumatic events, 
you were susceptible to PTSD. So it's not going to work for you, for your, you know, for, for people who you favor post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, it's not okay for the ones you favor. It's okay. It works for people that have actually the symptoms. It's not just who you think has the symptoms. Stress can make PTSD more likely while social support can make it less likely. Another point, stress can make PTSD more likely. So people knowing the fact that we done gone through this shit and nobody's doing about it can make the stress more likely. But if society would support the victims of PTSD, it would make the stress less likely. So if society would help in regards to, like I said, acknowledgement, and then after an acknowledgement, then we start working on ways to, to fix. If, if society did that, things would be different. But not only does society disregard it, you got someone like Trump, who doesn't even talk about uh, uh, um, white supremacy or racism um, or, or the, the, the Nazi, you know what I'm saying, or, the, or, or those Nazi uh, alt-right people who have been running around doing all this crazy shit. Not only does he justify and try to reason, um, you, know, you know, try to show reason about what they did and how they did it, uh, pointing out that they had a permit to go out there as if that's something that, you know, that, that's a goddamn point to make not only do people like that do that but to say that to somebody to completely minimize what they went through as if they never went through it not only does it make it worse but it's just completely disregarding that person's pain and their plight showing how much you really care so not one time have I ever heard Donald Trump say look I understand there is racism out here and we need to figure shit out not one time did I ever hear him say look I know there's an imbalance of uh, decision makers in the political uh, realm when it comes to um, ethnic and you know ethnicity and other people. I know there's more of me out here than anybody else making laws. Nope, they ain't saying that shit. Nah, all he's saying is, well, at least the alt-right Nazi people, they were out there with permits. Uh, all groups of terror. You see what I'm saying? So this is so the complete disregard is doing opposite of what this is saying about any kind of stress that a person or people are going through is that stress can make PTSD more likely, but social support can decrease it. So actually, not only can society uh, um, heal this wound, but it could definitely help people heal all the way. Okay, now we're going to break down the symptoms of PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorder. We're going to break down the symptoms. I'm not budging anything. All I'm doing here is changing one word, and that's stress to slave. Besides that, it's all true. PTSD symptoms usually start soon after the traumatic event, <clears throat> but they may not appear until months or years later, in parentheses, hundreds of years later. But to be honest, it's not even, it's not even as if it appeared hundreds of years later. It's actually, it happened... As soon as the traumatic event happened, you know what I'm saying? It's like the, the, um, the effects, the effects, they, they take place as soon as the event has happened and then they just snowball from there. They also may come and go over many years if symptoms last longer than four weeks because you great, what? Because you great distress or interfere with your work or home life, you might have PTSD. So... If these, if these symptoms last longer and uh, you have distress and it interferes with your work or home life, you might have PTSD. So let's, let's, look at, let's look at the young black man right now. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Um, is there interference <clears throat> with work? It's hard. Not even it's hard, but... In regards to high paying corporate jobs and good shit like that, it doesn't, uh, there's not too many of us in there. Yes, the percentages are getting better and better, slowly but surely, just because people now are having more access. Um, 
But one thing's for sure is there's definitely still an imbalance. And that imbalance, I think, in my opinion, is due to PTSD. And it's affecting your work ethic. And like I said, in a hole where you can't even teach your kid in regards to going, look, you know, you, you got to go to work because you were not doing it. So you can't, you, you don't know no better to even tell your kid that they got to go do that. Some people do, but I'm talking about majority of people here. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about me, someone like me who was lucky enough to get out and, and, and who's lucky enough to have two parents. I am, I am a small statistic. I am, I am a, a, a miracle. You know what I'm saying? Like. There is not that many people that are like me who are 33 years old, they're black, they're alive, they're not in prison, and they have both their parents. That's what I'm trying to say is that I'm not a majority, which is unfortunate. Home life. Home life is disrupted. No mother, no father. Uh, um, and if there is, they're in and out. And, um, you know, in regards to siblings, <clears throat> siblings in and out of jail going through the same thing so they're fighting so it's the same the same concept here you might have PTSD now there are four types of uh, symptoms of PTSD that may not be exactly the same for everyone each person experiences symptoms in their own way so we're gonna go through these four different phases and like I said just please keep in mind post-traumatic slave disorder correlated to what I'm trying to tell you and you will see what I'm what I'm saying Reliving the event, also called re-experiencing symptoms. You may have bad memories or nightmares. You even may feel like you're going through the event again. This is called a flashback. We all know what a flashback is. A flashback is something that is subconscious and it's something that's mental. And so what happens is that you feel the same type of uh, uh, um, physical uh, or, 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 or circumstances where you feel like it's almost the same type of scenario that's about to happen. You may have bad memories or nightmares. In regards to memories, when you, you know, when I, when I get pulled over by police, that is an example of one of those memories, is that sometimes I get pulled over by the police, I get so nervous, even though I ain't doing shit wrong, I get so fucking nervous just because I know it's some white dude with a gun that's pulling me over, and I don't know what's about to happen to me. And that's the same type of thing that happens. It's, it's, it's a certain anxiety that comes up. Why? It's because you know that your parents went through that shit. You know that your parents' parents went through that shit. You know that your parents, their parents' parents' parents went through that shit. Because we all know that. We all know that we we might get we might die fucking around with these people. These motherfuckers might do something. So that type of feeling creates a memory. You may even feel like you're going through that event again. When you're being approached by a certain, by police, when you're talking to, when you're in court and the judge talking to you, and the way they're talking to you and they're talking down on you as if you're nothing but scum, and they, you know, and they ask all these dumbass questions where to make you feel less than and, you know, belittling you. But that feeling, that's exactly what they're talking about here indirectly. It gives people those type of flashbacks being chased, you know what I mean, being chased around, being chased by police, uh, um, you know, getting pulled over, that shit is, uh, for some people, they don't, it doesn't scare you, for some people, it doesn't scare you, Maybe, you know, I know there's probably some black people out there, they don't get scared, or don't get nervous, but one thing's for sure, is that most of us do, that shit is not, it's not a joke. Avoiding situations that remind you of the event. You may try to avoid situations or people that trigger memories of the traumatic event. You may even avoid talking or thinking about the event. So avoiding situations that remind you of the event. You may try to avoid situations or people that trigger the memories. The people that trigger the memories are white. So when black people uh, um, associate with white people, this is the first thing that they're thinking of. This is subconsciously, indirectly, this is the first thing that we think of, is that, hold up, who the fuck are you? I don't know you that well. You might be one of them motherfuckers. And when I say them motherfuckers, the motherfuckers who don't give a shit about me, who used to sell me as cattle. And so that type of feeling is very prevalent in the black community worldwide. And, I, and I'll tell you right now, a lot of times when I talk to my, you know, when I talk to 
uh, you know, African American or anybody, you know, black for that matter, Nigerian, Jamaican, whatever it is, um, you know, they don't want to, you know, a lot of times they don't want to work for the white man. They don't want to work for the white man. Why? Because they feel like it ain't working for the white man. It's slavery all over again. You're getting pennies, you know, you, you're getting paid crumbs while they're making money hand over, the, hand over fist. And then it's back to that, that master and slave mentality. That's why a lot of black people subconsciously, they don't want to work for the white man. And, and when they do, they're doing it just because they have to. And, and then when they get home, they talk shit about it because they can't fucking stand it. Why? Because it reminds them and it's a trigger of the memories that they went through the past three, four, five hundred years. And they say, fuck it, I'd rather go get it myself. I'd rather go run around. I'm going to sell this dope. Or I'm going to rob this. Or I'm going to get this. Some of us go, fuck it, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to beat them with a book. You see what I'm saying? But like I said, unfortunately, with PTSD, you're not thinking to do the right shit. You're not thinking to go get a book. You're thinking, fuck that. I'm going to fucking shoot somebody if they don't give me what I need. Straight up. And if it ain't shooting, it's something else. You may even avoid talking or thinking about the event. So not only do you not ever hear or see, you know, it's like, you, yes, there's a certain percentage of, of black Americans and black people who definitely talk and, and um, you know, talk about the experiences of, of, of what our descend, our ancestors went through. But one thing's for sure is that today's youth, you know, even uh, the old heads, they don't like talking about the shit because they know ain't, ain't shit changed. So all it does is just piss them off. They don't like talking about it. You know, having more negative, uh, having more negative beliefs and feelings. The way you think about yourself and others may change because of the trauma. You may feel guilt or shame. So the way you think about yourself, the self, uh, uh, you know, the self uh, um, degradation, uh, the self disrespect of, of my, you know, of my people, especially my young, uh, you know, black people. Uh, it's it's, you know, it's evident, and this is exactly what this is, what is talking about here. The way you think about yourself and others may change because of the trauma. Number one, I, we don't hold our lives in high regard anymore. You know, because why is because we, um, and when I say we, I'm talking about my people who have gone through the suppression. We have deemed ourselves, uh, some people, they have deemed themselves um, less than because they have been consistently told and beaten uh, into that state of mind and state of being. So I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's like, if you think you got really strong willpower, then let me whoop your ass and your family's ass for 400 years. And then let me see you get out of that mentally by yourself. And you, and you can smile and be just as um, emotionally uh, uh, stable as, as me. Let's see that. Because I know that, you know, at the end of the day, whoever's listening to this, y'all agree with what I'm saying. Um, if you have been treated like shit, you, you be the kid, you be the kid until he gets older. He ain't going to grow up and, 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 and marry a woman and take care of his kids and, and be a, a family man. More than likely, he going to whoop his girl's ass. And if he does have kids, he going to whoop his kid's ass and so on and so forth. So my point is this, is that when you are, when you have been disrespected and you've been through life altering events to this magnitude, not only do you not respect yourself, not only do you already have a high disregard for your own life and yourself, but everyone around you too is under that same type of outlook. And everyone around you, that's how you're going to feel about them too. Nothing. You don't feel, why would you, how could you feel for someone else if you don't even give a shit about yourself? You may feel guilt or shame. Or you may not be interested in activities you used to enjoy. You know, and I can see the guilt and the shame in, our, in, in my people um, through all, all this shit. And our guilt and our shame, what we do is we turn it into music and we put it in our music. You can hear our guilt and our shame in our blues. You can hear our guilt and our shame in our jazz. You can hear our guilt and our shame in our rap music. You can hear our guilt and our shame and our tribal music and our drums. 
You can hear our, our, our guilt and our shame and our wailing when we sing um, uh, from tribal songs all the way to modern day right now. And then you can see it in, in a lot of people's faces too when they're walking down the street begging on a bus, smoked out, being crackheads or, or the, the prostitutes. You can see the guilt and the shame in their fucking face, man. You can see that shit. You can see that shit. And you may not be interested in the activities you used to enjoy. And that right there is kind of one of the most important things because not only were, you know, black people, you know, it's funny sometimes when I'm here, you know, I hear people in America, they'll say, well, black people themselves, they'll say, oh, well, black people don't swim. We don't fuck with water, blah, blah, blah. That shit's crazy. It's, it's such bullshit. We, not only have we always lived around the sea and, and we have thousands of lakes in Africa, not only has water been all around us, but it's something we fish. We've been fishing for, for ye- hundreds and thousands of years, man. We've been doing that. So it's like even us doing something as simple as swimming, that's something we all used to do. And it's something where it was part of life for us. Because even nowadays, go to the South Pacific, go to Nigeria, go to South Africa, all those places. We, we fish, we swim, man. We get it in. We get it in. And, you know, and that's just a little example of something that not only did we, we used to do, um, but now we don't just because of how. And then even when we got here, we weren't given access. You know, American slaves weren't given access to swimming, swimming pools and shit like that. They weren't they, just the, the, the you know, the, the concept of leisure time and swimming. You know, slaves weren't afforded that luxury or that privilege, or whatever you want to call it. They, they weren't afforded that. So can you, now can you see why four or five hundred years later their kids are going, yeah, no, we don't fucking swim for nothing. You can see why now, right? Because their parents were told, not only can, you not, you, can y'all never swim with us and do what we're doing, but if you ever do that, well, you'll fucking die, or we'll whoop the shit out of you. So, you, you, you know, you have to understand how detrimental... Um, post-traumatic slave disorder is and how these acts will affect descendants later on down the line. You may feel the world that is, you may feel, you may feel that the world is dangerous and you can't trust anyone. You know? And that's exactly what majority of, of us feel is that in every aspect of living, we not only have no control, but we've been dominated on and we've not been given any uh, leeway. The only leeway that we've been get, the only leeway we have, we've died for. People had to die for. So not only is our, you know, our, are our communities dangerous, but we deem the world so because The world is what, you know, it's like the people who are in it in regards to the the, the powers that be are the ones that did the shit that they did. And they did it on on a worldwide level. So to us, that's exactly what it is. The whole world is deemed dangerous because everybody teamed up to, to take down Africa. All these motherfuckers teamed up. All of Europe, they teamed up and then they split Africa apart the same way they teamed up and took America and split that shit apart. So, yes, us against the goddamn world. That's exactly right. You might be numb or find it hard to feel happy. And I know y'all see, I know y'all seen this. Yeah, I know y'all seen this in my, in my people's uh, eyes. The numbness, um, the, um, the emptiness. I know y'all seen this. Because I know I see it in my people's eyes. Or you find it hard to feel happy. So, you know, go to, um, you know, go to the east side and, um, and at least and tell me how easy it is to feel happy walking down the lot. Like, tell me. Go to 10th. Go to over there in 10th and council area. Tell me how happy it is to walk down that street and, and knowing that, this is where you about to lay your head. 
when you got hoes and strip uh, prostitutes goddamn walking down the street right next to you. You got goddamn smokers begging you for money. Little ass badass kids. You could, uh, you know, something poking at their shirt. You know they got a little ass pistol or knife. You don't know what the fuck they about. So understand that this is so serious, man. This is so serious. <clears throat> and then the last one, feeling keyed up. Also called hyper arousal. You may be jittery or always alert and on the lookout for danger. You see, living in a place, living in them neighborhoods that are infested with drugs and violence, this is exactly what happens, is that there is a sense of hyper arousal. And that's why, too, there's so many goddamn babies, because ain't nothing else to do. And when you are always in a state of jitterness and constant alertness and always looking out for danger, then that feeling of being amped up and ready to go is going to be a constant feeling. It's a constant feeling. So imagine being in a neighborhood like that and, and always living in a neighborhood like that where you always, where you got to keep a, your head on a swivel. That shit is not, you know, it's not healthy for anybody. You may have trouble concentrating or sleeping. Try go to school, try living in a neighborhood like that and then you go to school and try to, uh, uh, and do your math test. You know, Miss Mrs. Howard over there asking you um, a question about uh, Spanish. But there was a shootout in your neighborhood the night before, uh, and, and it, woke, it woke your whole family up. Actually, a few bullets went into the house. Luckily, it didn't hit nobody. But now you in class, you know, eight hours later, uh, doing a math test. You don't think this is on a little kid's mind, coming from that type of environment? You don't think that that, that doesn't affect that kid's mind, or that, that young girl's mind, or that young man, or that young lady, that mother, that father? Knowing that my house, you know, you being a father and knowing that your house was shot at, you didn't even do nothing wrong, and you had kids in there, and they almost died, and you at work trying to work. You're trying to, you're trying to concentrate on your job, but you know damn well that, that not only that shit happened the night before, but you got to go home to that shit. <laughs> like people, like, put yourselves in them shoes, man. Put yourselves in them shoes. And understand that when it comes to these type of environments, majority of them for us are like that. We don't have a shitload of black neighborhoods that are that have uh, uh, two hundred thousand dollar houses, hundred fifty thousand dollar houses, or middle whatever middle class. Like yes, they are there, but like I'm saying, majority of them statistically are below the poverty line. The unemployment rate high. Graduation rates, low. Um, incarceration rates, high. Crime, high. Prostitution, high. There's a liquor store and a smoke shop on every block. Or you may have trouble concentrating or sleeping. You might suddenly get angry or irritable, startle easily, or act in unhealthy ways like smoking, using drugs and alcohol, and driving recklessly. So you might suddenly get angry or irritable. And, and y'all know that. Y'all know that. Y'all seen that. You know, y'all seen that young black man walking around with a chip on his shoulder. I used to be that man. Every once in a while, I still am, goddammit. You might suddenly get angry or irritable for no reason. Startle easy. Some people are just shaky as hell. Or act in unhealthy ways like smoking, using drugs, crack, alcohol, alcohol liquor stores, smoking. So understand, people, this is bigger than what you think. It's bigger than what you think. Understand that what's unfortunate is, <clears throat> look, I didn't, I didn't make it this way. I'm just calling it our sin. And so I just want people to look at things the most logistic way and to not, and to quit. I'm tired of motherfuckers trying to uh, uh, disregard the plight that my people have been through as if it won't affect us to this present day. Understand that post-traumatic slave disorder is real and the effects 
of going through life traumatic events, they will stain your life and anybody else that comes from your loins. Anybody, anybody, any child you have, anybody that's around you, they will be affected by your experiences one way or another. But one thing's for sure is that your kids will feel this pain. The same way they will take on your alcoholism if you got that too. So I'm going to go back to, uh, um, I'm going to go back to present day. I'm going to go back to present day, you know, the, you know, to show y'all, you know, the, um, you see, this is what, this is the bondage that we had to go through. And, you know, sometimes, you know what I'm saying, looking at this shit, man, you know, I just, like I said, man, I, I don't even know how, how we got through it. I really don't. Um, them type of shackles put on that man's, put on my brother's neck like that to where you can tell that other slaves would be shackled around him. And I'm assuming all, you know, those four uh, type of things that were used to, to, to hold a bunch of slaves together at one time. But understand that my brother who went through this, his kids felt, they felt them same restraints on their necks 400 years later, subconsciously, indirectly. They felt those. That same look that he's wearing is the same look that his kids, 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 grandkids are wearing too. And this is what we had to go through. And so for people to not understand that these, are, these events are not traumatic to the point where they will be passed along uh, uh, genetically um, is, like I said, you're, you're a fucking idiot. And you, and you just want to ignore um, what doesn't affect you because it doesn't affect you. Being water hoses, uh, uh, being sprayed at you, knowing that, you know, that people don't like you just because of what you look like. To walk around every day feeling like that. Like, can you imagine? And like I said, and then you got, a, and you got kids. Like, how, how would you tell your kids that? I don't know why they hate us, baby. I don't know why they hate your skin. They call you nigga. They just hate us, but you, you got to love them or, or just ignore it or whatever it is. It's like, how do you even explain that shit to a young kid? Because I, I remember my parents when they used to tell me that, you know, sometimes white people might call you a nigga and they might call you a Kaffir. They call us Kaffirs in South Africa. Kaffir means nigga. They'll, they'll say, they'll be like, they might call you a Kaffir, but they don't listen to them. Some people are just ignorant like that, and they hate us for no reason, and because that's that's just how they are. I didn't understand that shit even when they told me back then, and I know they didn't understand. They knew I didn't get it either, because they didn't get it. All they had to do was prepare me to. Do do white parents have that conversation with their white kids? Now now uh, little little Johnny, um, now some black kids might run around and call you cracker. Now, just know you're better than that, and, and uh, they don't, you know, they're, they're just ignorant. I bet you money that shit don't happen. I bet you money that shit don't happen. Do, do, do the white parents talk to their kids about getting pulled over? That when they get pulled over, don't move fast because you might get shot? Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. So they know, so they feel that you have respect and they don't treat you any different. Talk slow so they don't misunderstand anything you're saying and they think that you're saying something that you might not be saying? Hmm? Do they say things like that, DR? If you buy a phone, call somebody as soon as possible. If you do get pulled over, pull over by lights where they can see you, where somebody can see if anything happens, you have witnesses. Do, do, white, do white parents tell their white kids this when they're about, about interacting with police? Hmm? Or about being called a racial slur? Or knowing, or, 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 or warning them that when they go to work or when they go to school, they might be treated different because of the color of their skin. They might not get uh, uh, in line, or they might, you know, they might not get this certain piece of something because somebody they just don't like the color of your skin. Or when they call you a, a porch monkey, just know, son, when when you hear a motherfucker say porch monkey, that means they're talking shit about you. When you hear a motherfucker say, uh, 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 uh whatever, chickaboo, whatever the fuck they call us. When you hear that shit, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, they're talking about you. 
They talking about you, son. When they call you boy, understand they talking about you, son. Do, do white parents tell that shit to their kids? Say when black people say something, I bet you money they goddamn don't. You know why? It's because their life didn't consist of this harassment and of this uh, 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 and of this consistent um, uh, just abuse. They didn't go through that. I'm sure that you know so they would go through it once in a while, like anybody else. But for the most part, like I said, they didn't go through it on a daily basis like we do, or we did, and we still do to this day. This is the shit I'm talking about. How do you explain this to your kids? That when they walk down the street and if something's going on and this is... How do you explain that shit? And then how do you get over this? Tell me how you get over this. You can tell this picture was during the, during the, the, uh, the Civil Rights Movement, which is in the 60s. So these people are probably still alive to this goddamn day. How do they explain this to their kids? Imagine if you were seeing your parents being sprayed like that. Imagine what that would do to your mind, to your psyche. Imagine how angry you would be on whoever's holding that hose. Imagine that. I know if that was my family. <laughs> How do you get over this? Hmm? How do you just let shit like this go? This wasn't in the 1800s. This is the 60s. How do you let this shit go? These people are probably still alive right now. How do you let this shit go? How do you let that shit go? Huh? Tell me. You can go to Iraq, right? Shoot some people. Come back, get PTSD, they'll pay for everything you for the rest of your life. This happens to you, you're told to get over it, and nothing, and, and, and no, there's no compensation. There's not even any goddamn uh, um, uh, um, health diagnosis for it. So tell me, is this, is, is this uh, you know, are these acts, is this as detrimental and as, um, you know, and as, and as Life shaking as uh, going to war? I'd like to think so. So, for me, I really I'm trying to prove a point here. And I know these images are hard to watch, are hard to look at. Especially for me, they're really hard to look at. I don't like seeing my people in these type of positions, but I, I you know, it's like. I have to do this because I have to let people know um, what the fuck is going on out here and what we're going through. Look at this. Look at this police officer holding that lady's hair like that. Like, like, what's what is that helping holding her hair like that? All that's doing is just it, it, it's it's affirming dominance. That's all it's doing. It's just talking shit to her. It's going, bitch. I got you by the hair too, bitch. That's what that's saying to her. Look, you got two grown ass men holding her. They already got her restraint, and that dude is holding her fucking hair. Hold her hair. So understand that this understand that this right here is traumatic. And you can't just go home and forget about that. And because of this, because of all this, because of this, because of this, this is what we get. That's what we get. We get my young king. Who's tired of being beat? Who's tired of being arrested? Who's tired of having dogs biting them? Who's tired of water hoses? Tired of shackles? Tired of bondage? Tired of being whipped? You're tired of the chains. Now you got this. That that little man, little king, he look he don't even look ten years old, if that, eleven, ten, ten, probably ten. Look at him. He he got what? That looks like a Glock with an extender. Might be forty five. No, it's a Glock. Square. Look at that man. That shit kills me. And he feels like he has to have that gun to protect himself and his life. Because he don't want to go through this shit no more. At 10 years old, running around with a pistol with a, with a 30 clip, extended clip in, in it. Because he's tired of this shit. I'll tell you what. If anybody's putting this shit for a long period of time, I'd like to assume sooner or later, 
you gonna pick you up one of these, or your son gonna have one of these. Cause they're tired of the bullshit. We're tired of the bullshit. These are people that are hurting. These are people that are 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 suffering through traumatic events. I bet you every single person in this picture right here has not only seen someone die, but has been involved directly, indirectly with a shootout. Probably even before they could even pick up a gun. And then you wonder why they're ready to shoot and kill anything too. It's because they've been treated like shit. So guess what they're going to act like? Guess what they're going to act like? And remember, we just talked about PTSD, right? We just talked about that their actions, not only do they hate themselves, but they hate everything around them because of the trauma they went through, because of being belittled and beaten. Then now they start belittling and beating everything around them, including themselves. Thug life. The hate you give little infants. Fuck everybody. Thug life. The hate you give little infants. Fuck everybody. Tupac said that. And this is exactly what that is. The hate you give little infants. Fuck everybody. That's what's going on. And then we get people like Reckless, who... Well, obviously, he's not the first of this, of, of, you know, of, of this kind, but there's definitely been various rappers, numerous rappers who not only glorify, but have made money off of violence, off the perception of violence. But it's not Rico's fault. Rico just, was just running the streets, trying to survive. And then one day, some white man started paying him for it. Well... Now, guess what all the other kids running around the neighborhood want to do? They want to be like Rico. They want to be reckless. Because now, it's profitable to be reckless, right? It's profitable. Actually, the more reckless, the more money now, the more exposure. The more on your stack card, on, the, on, on some street shit, and then the more um, exposure on uh, industry shit. Did you see how he got that gun that was here? With his hand, because that's how he feel. That's how it is. It's either his head or yours. Pick one. This is what. That's how it is. And the look in his eyes is the look that a lot of young black men have, and that look is because of this. Because of this. You see that look like that? You see that look in that man's eyes? Does that look familiar? Does it look familiar? You see them looks? You see those eyes? That's what it's about, ladies and gentlemen. And y'all need to understand... When you go through this, these kids are going to create their own families, families of misfits and families of, of, of post-traumatic slave disorder um, patients. You know, it's like cancer patients, they got to click, right? They all hang out. Cancer patients all hang out, don't they? Yeah. Motherfuckers got AIDS or HIV. They got AIDS groups, right? Alcoholics, all alcohol. They go to AA and hang out with each other, right? Well, then... When you've been through rapes, beatings, lynchings, shootings, sexual assaults, bondage, the kids of those, of those victims will, are going to hang out, and they're going to click up, and they're going to create their family, and that's what you see now. Hence, the gang culture that we have is because one way or another, these kids wanted a family, and if... And if, they're, if they weren't going to get it at home with mom and dad, they're going to get it on the street. And now, it's to the point where we're comfortable with the madness. We're comfortable with the violence. We're comfortable with the rage. We're comfortable with the jittedness. We're comfortable with all that shit. It makes me sick.
It makes me sick. So at the end of the day, that's what it is. Understand, folks, it's deeper than it's deeper than uh, than what y'all think. It's deeper than what y'all think. So I'm gonna leave y'all with that. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Be kind to one another. And I hope you can take my information, soak it in, and, and give it back out to someone else who don't know about it. Peace.